streetcar remnants. And of course, you know, the most obvious remnant is us, um, seen here at 42nd Street, and of course at uh, Berry Road. But there's a lot of the streetcar, um, there's a lot of little pieces of streetcar infrastructure that are still around. One of the biggest is the original power plant and car house. This was uh, the streetcar company's headquarters um, at 3rd Avenue North and 2nd Street in Minneapolis. And the big chimney in the back, and you can actually see that it's an addition, was the powerhouse, one of the two powerhouses that were added for the cable cars that never wound up running in Minneapolis. And even though the cable cars never came to pass, this did power the streetcar system until the main steam station was constructed. The uh, Midway Car House, which was built in 1891, just east of Raymond and University, the building is still there and it's directly adjacent to the um, Green Line LRT station. You can see the edge of it right here. And the main thing that's happened is they've changed the facade completely so it doesn't have big doors in the front for streetcars, but it is the same building. Of all the newer streetcar stations, Northside is still extant. Uh, here you see it as it was built in the 1920s. And here you see it now uh, with the bus additions that were added, oh, about 1953 or so. And it's used for light industry and warehousing. The, um, they had a small satellite car barn that they built in South St. Paul to uh, house 24 cars uh, for the reverse commute trips out of the South St. Paul stockyards. And that building is still here with the streetcar tracks in the floor um, as an auto parts or a truck parts dealership. Of course, the main steam station on the east end of the Stone Arch Bridge, and it's been rebuilt very extensively, but is now used by the University of Minnesota. There are three substations left. These are not then and now photos. These are both now. Um, the one on the right is over on Concord Avenue, Concord Street between Wabash and Robert in St. Paul. And the one at left is on Lowry at, I wanna say Third Street North. Um, and Ooh. then the Stillwater. What was um, the substation used for? Oh, the sub substations were used to boost the power because direct current only travels so far without a voltage drop. And so you got to boost it. And so they had these things all over the city. And so this is the Owen Street substation in Stillwater uh, in vintage, and it's still there as a residence. Of course, there's uh, parts of the right of way that are available. This is the right of way that next to the alley of Irving and Chains Avenue, looking north from 34th Street. This ran from 31st to 34th. And the initial, the original auto alley was to the left of it, to the west of it. And now the regular alley has taken over uh, the streetcar right of way. And this is that fence that I like to tell people about that's just north of 34th Street and um, is held up by, this was an overhead wire pole that was cut off, but the other fence posts are motor line rail, very lightweight rail, maybe 30 pound or so from the original steam powered motor line. And then just south of there, between 35th and 36th, the stop at the end of what is now called Coney Eris Way, I think it was called 35th Street at the time, the stop of the little concrete platform is still there. And of course, the right of way itself has been turned into a walking trail. And then uh, the 44th Street right of way from uh, Xerxes to two blocks to Zenith is now the Linden Hills trolley path. And there are a couple of little remnants of the steam powered motor line, which only went west from Lake Harriet to Lake Minnetonka from 1882 to 1886. But Motor Place is the little short street located uh, between Beard Avenue and Chowan Avenue next to the right of way. And then Motor Street is this little half block long street right out by 44th and Brookside in Edina. 
Oh, Aaron, is that how those streets got their name? Yes, it is, because uh, the railroad was called the Motor Line. And this is a piece of the old Motor Line right-of-way. This is the aerial photo showing the Country Club neighborhood in Edina. Here's 44th Street and the streetcar track going right along it. The Motor Line had a somewhat different alignment. It came out along Sunnyside and then turned west and ran right next to what is now an alley. And so you're looking down that alley and next to the alley was where the motor line ran. And then moving further west, a short piece, oh, maybe a quarter mile of the streetcar right away in the cut next to Blake School is now a bike trail. And then in Hopkins, Excelsior Boulevard is the old streetcar right of way. Uh, from just about old 8th Avenue in Hopkins out to uh, Baker Road. And this is um, where the main line to Excelsior, which is on Excelsior Boulevard at this point, separated from the Deep Haven line which is on this street that goes curving around. And between the two is Junction Park. And it's called Junction Park because this was the junction of the two streetcar lines. This is in Minnetonka. And then further out west, uh, Purgatory Springs is a county park. And they have recently acquired the old streetcar right of way uh, at, near the edge of it. This is parallel to Excelsior Boulevard. And this bridge abutment where it crossed Purgatory Creek is still there. And then of course, Highway 7 from a point oh, about a half mile west of Highway 101 into Excelsior, Highway 7 is the old streetcar right of way. I don't know if this postcard shows the exact location, but you get the idea. And out in Excelsior, I don't know how they managed to find them, but you can see here is one an exact same street light on Big Island, and they also had these at the Excelsior Dock Station. And this is located on Mill Street, just a block from the Excel, old Excelsior Dock Station. And then on the Deep Haven line at Maplewood Road, um, there was one of the open shelters, and it has been enclosed and made into a house. And then near that, uh, the right of way as it curves into Deep Haven, uh, goes under a little bridge here uh, and is used as a walking path. Here, of course, is the Worth Park shelter um, at the end of the Glenwood Avenue line, still standing. And this is one of the lake. Minnetonka line shelters from Hopkins West. This was the standard shelter. Uh, you can see in the vintage view, this is uh, the one at Glen Lake. And we think this is the one from Clear Springs, which is where uh, the line crossed Highway 101. But uh, this is in somebody's backyard. And when the newspaper carried the story about the Worth Park shelter, um, the lady who owns this uh, contacted us and said, hey, we have one of those. And so it's been modified with screens and all, but it's the same thing. Uh, Bill and Rose and I went out and looked at it. One of my favorite artifacts are the trolley wire hangers on the walls of vintage buildings in downtown Minneapolis and downtown St. Paul. And this was an attempt by the city uh, to get rid of some of the overhead wire poles on the sidewalks so they could hang the span wires from the buildings. On the inner campus line on the ravine just west of uh, University Grove, well, it's actually the University Grove stop. And the right of way is still there. It's kind of a walking path. And here you can see the pad for the shelter. And then there's the stairway going up the hill. Here's the stairway as it is today. And then, uh, what I think I referred to as, as Y bulges. Uh, we found several places around town where the streetcar would back into a Y and the street was made wider for the length of the Y so automobiles could get around it. This is 50th and Penn 
and you can see the curb line cuts back in at the end of the Y, and here it's doing the same thing today. There's about four or five of these around town. Here's the Y for the South St. Paul line. I like this one. This is in Stillwater. And at 3rd and Chestnut, at the base of the Chestnut Street steps, they had uh, an inspector was stationed there in this little booth because that's where all the streetcars would meet and time transfer with each other. And this little retaining wall that went around the inspector's shed is still there, housing a park bench today. This is on the Fort Snelling right of way. And this was the Bureau of Mines stop uh, just to the east of where the VA hospital is today. And you can see this retaining wall and here's the retaining wall today. You go a little further north of here where the original line went and cut across some backyards and there's a power line that follows it. It's pretty easy to see. Como Park is one of the biggest concentrations of artifacts. And this is uh, the exit where the streetcars left the Como Park right of way at Hamlin Avenue on the west end. And it's now a bike trail on the right of way. And then there's this bridge over the street that used to be called Beulah Lane. The street's not there anymore, but the abutments are still there and the bike trail goes over it. So they went and they built this line. Um, they built this bridge and you'll notice it says 1898 to 1954. Well, this thing actually quit in uh, 52 through here, Como Harriet Streetcar Line. And then here's where it comes out the other end, crossing the Horton Avenue. And then the bike trail extends under Lexington Avenue, which still goes over the right of way, and then past the St. Paul Depot. And as you can see, everything here is more or less the same. The pedestrian bridge was rebuilt a number of years ago. It was very deteriorated. And here's the trolley wire hanger on the underside of the pedestrian bridge. And what I think is the last extant completely intact pole this was uh, this pole was located a couple hundred feet to the east, and it was a shorter one used to uh, handle a pull off. But they moved it, and they actually put up a nice little sign that says what this thing is. And now I think since I took this picture, this car body has been cut in half. But this is the shortened streetcar body that was brought in to serve as the uh, office for the miniature golf of Como Park. I haven't been over for there for a while, but the last time I saw it, there was only half of it. You know, last time I was there, there wasn't anything there at all, actually. Has it gone? Okay. Now, of course, you have the lower portal of the uh, Selby Tunnel. And then the uh, Hazel Park Bridge over the Omaha Railroad on the east side of St. Paul, which is now a bike trail. They've put in a new bridge. They had to raise it up more um, to, for the, to honor the federal regulations on uh, on overhead clearance over railroads, but it's on the same abutments. And this is turning around, looking at it curving down into the Furnace Parkway right of way. And then further out the Matamidi line, it went through this little uh, pond, and now there's a bike trail on it. And Russ Olson took these. I've never gone out to explore them, but these are cattle underpasses on the Stillwater line between White Bear Lake and Stillwater. And then on the Minneapolis, Anoka and Cuyuna range, this is where it went under the Sioux line next to uh, Marshall Street Northeast. And so it went under this, this entrance. And when you go under there, the overhead wire, the trolley board is still there. And then there, uh, there's a little bit of the Anokan Cuyuna Range track that's still in business. It's the two spurs, whoops. It's the two spurs that enter the waterworks. And so uh, here it is turning across uh, East River Road. And uh, here's that location today. They're still getting freight cars. This is a little bit further up along East River Road. Here's the other spur going into the waterworks. <clears throat> and um, the rails are actually still bonded. 
And I added this, whoops, I added this slide to it. You know, there's a lot of the track that's still under the streets. And this is what they did. You can see they said cross section showing plan to cover uh, the tracks. And so you have the tracks and what they would do is put a layer of asphalt um, that was crowned over it. And I, these are two pictures up in Duluth and Superior. Um, this particular one, actually, no, I think this is, I think this was Girard Avenue by Lake and Girard before they covered it up. And this was in Superior Street on East Broadway. And if you look carefully, even though this line was abandoned and I want to say 1932, um, you, you have rails under emerging under the street. I happened to come along and there was an excavation. And here's the Duluth Street Railway offices that are still standing. This is um, their substation out at West 92nd Street, which is, uh, is used by the county as a public works yard. It's either the county or the city. And then here's the remnant of the interstate bridge where the streetcar road the uh, outrigger, and here you can see an overhead wire support uh, still on it. This is the um, Lester Park uh, waiting station, which dates all the way back to the streetcars. We actually have a lot earlier shots than this of it. This is uh, the Mankato car house, um, which is now a wing of, of uh, a church. This is the uh, Masaba Railway Hibbing Depot that survives as Zimmy's for, for uh, Robert Zimmerman, Bob Dylan, Bar and Grill. And then of course, Streetcar 303. And then the final slide, um, a lot of the lines are the same. There's still a Selby Lake, a Robbinsdale, a Brian Johnson and a Chicago Fremont bus today just because they were really good places to put transit lines. That's the end of it.